Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. Today, a mod from Stability AI has officially announced Deep Floyd IF. Basically, uh, a next generation step forward for stable diffusion, but in an entirely new model that has almost nothing in common with stable diffusion. Also, I had some interesting hiccups earlier this week when they did sort of a soft release. The release was so anticipated that there were actually prediction markets betting on when this would come out and they almost got it right, but we'll get into that later in the video. From a high level, what this model is, it's a stable diffusion style image model uh, that more or less replaces clip with a full LLM based on 11 billion parameters uh, to understand prompts. So basically um, this model is much better at understanding complex prompts just because it understands language better. Not quite as well as ChatGPT, but this is using a full LLM instead of a uh, clip. Also, this is a cascaded diffusion model based on the T5 encoder. So that is to say in very technical terms that it has very little in common with stable diffusion, which is based on very different tooling. The most similar existing model that we've gone over on this channel to this new Deep Floyd IF is Google's Imogen model. Um, architecturally, they're actually really, really similar. Now, some important things to note here is that it does text. So that's the biggest sort of leap forward. Also, in terms of running this, the, the hugging face page is basically unusable. You can only generate 64 by 64 pixel images because uh, this is significantly almost an order of magnitude more compute intensive to use. So there's actually a legitimate 16 gigabyte RAM minimum just to get anything to come out of this model. Yeah, so way more compute intensive. I would argue that the results are much better even though this is just a base model, nothing has really been fine tuned. So expecting this early version of the model to compete with a properly tuned model like mid journey is not really something I would expect right now. Yeah, the only other really contentious part of this is the license is pretty harsh. And the license is the reason why you might've seen some things on Hacker News about this model um, yesterday and a little bit the day before. Uh, and ironically, they released an entire demo of how to use this in uh, Google, Google Colab and it actually didn't even work. Like they pulled the, the entire model and broke their own demo just because they wanted to sort of get this right. The biggest aspects of this, which we'll get into later, are that you really, this is not intended to be used for anything commercial yet. So with like logos and that kinds of things, there are very harsh penalties for removing um, the NSFW filter, which I think is kind of a, it's a response to what's happened in Australia over the last week. It's very interesting. I My opinion is that it does solidly outperform Stable Diffusion 2.1 if you have a GPU that can handle it. Uh, I've been running it mostly on my 3090 and uh, a few uh, RTX A5000s I have, but let's get into what this model actually produces. All right, so in time, I'm gonna have a full guide for how to get this running with an RTX 3090. But for now, so I can get this out, let's go over some of these initial releases that were actually from quite some time ago, but just privately. So but for whatever reason, there are a lot of uh, these owls in this, but um, yeah, so these are all rainbow owls. And you can tell that even for a model from when this was posted, like in early January, um, the consistency is pretty incredible in terms of having furry things and really abiding by the full model, which I think is cool. Uh, I knew that, that some of these were leaked earlier this year and the ability for IF to do glassy things with contextual things behind it and handling um, optical distortion was something that actually had shown up in um, Hacker News a few times. And what was curious was no one really knew what these models were at the time, but now we know. Um, my favorites are, although this is pretty well documented in other um, models, um, are how this model perceives pixel art and how much context you can add in the back. The benefit of having an LLM baked into this, which by the way, um, IF basically stands for fusion, which they mean fusion of an image model and an LLM in kind of a different multimodal context. And what I like about this is you can add so much more detail um, based on seeds and then based on just contextual words um, into the back of like these images. So subtle details are easier to highlight and basically like telling it what details you want to emphasize is much more important because that's more of a language problem than say uh, like feeding things into mid journey and thinking like I'll just order it sooner than emphasizing it as bold or um, those kinds of things. So they had to have, you know, the hand demo. 
And granted, these are cherry picks, so this is as good as as good as it will get, and are also from quite some time ago. But what what I think is cool is that this model was this good this long ago, and that they've just been sort of chugging along with it as we go. Uh, photorealism is something that this model also really gets right, um, even though it's a base model. Uh, and then contextual theming, oddly enough, because it's an LLM backed model um, is much better. So if you say like stitched patch or um, you give it, so if you say stitched patch or if you say, you know, if you're referencing a historical image in a certain text format, it's really good at absolutely nailing that. Um, this is one that was actually sent to me earlier this year that kind of blew my mind. It seems stupid simple, but you have the bokeh, you have an optical context that is incredibly good. And um, yeah, it seems dumb. Like you'd say, oh, maple syrup and a maple leaf. Like how hard would that be? But let's get to some of the more recent stuff. So obviously they're very big on the fact that text works well. Um, this is a great example of uh, like, and it's a simple one too. It's not like in order to get this work, you have to have an incredibly long seed or long prompt. This is, so this is like graffiti on a wall. Uh, the text is perfect. The context is nearly perfect. Um, I wouldn't say it's perfectly photorealistic because this trash at the bottom kind of looks, you know, a bit different. Uh, but yeah, paintings look great. What's really interesting to me is that this is so good in such an untuned kind of base format. Um, it would be a, totally reasonable to think that this would come out of a highly tuned stable diffusion model that was highly context aware which for now, even with all the progress we've made, is as close as we've... It's like the new situation where, like, previously you had to train for a specific environment to handle input and segmentation, and now that problem has just progressed to uh, fine-tuning models to get specific outputs. It's less a segmentation issue and less, like, a contextual awareness issue. Um, so this this image is pretty boring, but it this would be very, very hard to get out of stable diffusion. You know, a red square sitting on top of a blue sphere illuminated but from the upper right like that would be very very difficult to get right uh stylistically you can end up with some really exotic things um so this again you i've sussed this kind of stuff out of stable diffusion but it's much much harder to get right and this model is just breezing through um i'm not sure exactly why i i need to do some digging technically but um the reflectivity and just general environmental awareness of this model also seems incredibly good. Um, I know I keep saying it's incredibly good, but this is just kind of crazy. Uh, and you can now use this locally. So the cool thing is, you know, Midjourney is still closed source. This is still licensed in kind of a weird way, but let's see what else they have here. And um, yeah, so it's just kind of cherry picked images right now. Um, you can download this model right now on their GitHub. And uh, I highly recommend if you have a GPU that has enough RAM, um, try playing around with this. Uh, I've plugged it in the past, but we do have a ongoing relationship with TensorDoc. So if you want to try this out on one of their A100s, I can uh, get you a promotion. So if you'd want to, so if you want to try this out on one of their A100s, send me a DM or send me an email and I can get you a offer code for a few percent. I think it's like 12 or 15% off uh, your first GPU rental with TensorDoc. They're great guys there. And um, yeah, there's going to be way more content uh, going forward with this. And uh, I hope you all have learned something and I will see you in the next video.